Abilities are a huge thing in the Pokemon games that have been an absolute staple for both casual and competitive play since they were first introduced in Generation 3. They add a lot of layers to battling and can even do stuff outside of battles too. And there's also a lot of interesting facts to be had about them as well, which is of course what we're interested in today, and it's what we're going to be taking a look at, which is all made possible by today's wonderful sponsor, UCast Studios, who I run my Pokemon podcast with, and Moore Park College's Concert for the Cats. Moore Park College is home to many fabulous programs, but of course I'm a little bit partial to the Exotic Animal Training and Management Program and America's Teaching Zoo. My wife being my wife heard that Mara and their team were trying to raise some money for the new habitat for the cats and, and she said, you know, can we help? The great thing about this concert is it's not just me, but we will have some of Moore Park's own students opening for me. I think every three or four songs we should bring out an animal like the show. <laughs> and the kids should do the thing, you know, do, 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 do their little show with them. Be a part of Neil and Karma's story at America's Teaching Zoo and join us for Concert for the Cats, September 10th. Alrighty, so getting into the facts, this first one is a really charming and nice one, which basically inspired this entire video. Delibird is a pretty classic Pokemon simply due to the fact that it's based on Santa Claus. It also has a gimmicky signature move called Present, but the Santa references don't stop there either, because this inspiration is also referenced in its ability. Delibird's hidden ability is Insomnia, which prevents sleeping, and given the aforementioned inspirations, this is most assuredly a reference to Santa Claus as well, since he stays up all night delivering presents all over the world on Christmas. Delibird's regular abilities, Vital Spirit and Hustle, also sort of fit this as well, cause Santa definitely has to have a vital spirit to make those deliveries, and he's gotta hustle to do it in time. But the insomnia ability is the real connection here, and I think it's a really nice touch to Delibird's design. As I mentioned in the intro, abilities were introduced in Generation 3, and in those games, there are a couple remnants that give us a glimpse into the development of this mechanic. The first is a rather surprising one, and that is that it seems that originally, not all Pokémon were planned to get an ability. In the Gen 3 games, there is an unused ability description within the data of the games that reads, no special ability. This obviously implies that some Pokemon might have not had any ability at all at some point in development, and abilities might have originally been more like Mega Evolutions or Gigantamax Pokemon, where only certain Pokemon get access to them. That definitely would have been a bit of an unfair advantage, and even more so than Megas or Gigantamax Pokemon, I think. So it's definitely a good thing that they seemingly changed their minds and gave abilities to all Pokemon instead. The other scrapped remnant of abilities from the Gen 3 era has to do with an entirely scrapped ability. Coded within the Gen 3 games is an unused ability known as Cacophony, whose effect was that it negated all sound-based moves used against the Pokémon with this ability. It's interesting that this ability was cut though, because there is another ability that was also introduced in Gen 3, known as Soundproof, that does the exact same thing as Cacophony, it negates sound-based moves. So, was Cacophony just an early form of soundproof? Did Game Freak include it, not realizing they had already included an identical ability? Was it taken out because they thought it wouldn't be very viable, and then changed their minds and replaced it with soundproof? It's really hard to say based on the amount of info we currently have, but it's definitely an interesting peek behind the curtain of the Gen 3 game. Another interesting thing about abilities is that there are plenty of abilities that some Pokémon should absolutely have access to, but they don't. For example, Rotom Frost does not have access to the ability Refrigerate, despite literally being a refrigerator. 
Along those same lines, Qfint and Copperaja do not have access to the Steelworker ability, despite being steel types and literally being based on construction workers and construction equipment. Furthermore, Rhyperior doesn't have the Battle Armor ability, despite literally having Battle Armor on its body. It evolves from Rhydon when traded while holding the Protector, and yeah, Battle Armor is literally what it's meant to be, yet it doesn't have this ability. Finally, Smeargle does not have access to the ability Trace, despite being an artist Pokemon, and despite that Trace copies the opponent's ability, which is exactly what Smeargle's signature move Sketch does, but for moves. This one in particular was definitely a missed opportunity, because it would have really brought Smeargle's gimmicky concept full circle and made it all the cooler in my opinion, in addition to just being a perfect fit but alas, someone at Game Freak just didn't connect the dots. These are probably just a few abilities that don't belong to Pokemon that they absolutely should though, so if you know of any others, let me know in the comments below. On the flip side of Pokemon that should have abilities that they don't are Pokemon that have abilities that are kind of counterintuitive to their designs. For instance, Rattled is an ability that boosts a Pokemon's speed if it is hit with a Bug, Dark, or Ghost-type move, mentioning that the Pokemon is scared of these kinds of moves. However, there are several Dark and Bug types that have this ability, like Lediba and Poochyanna. Additionally, these three types are the exact three weaknesses of the Psychic type, clearly showing some kind of connection, but no Psychic-type Pokémon currently have this ability at all. In a similar vein, Anorith and Armaldo have Swift Swim as their hidden ability, which raises speed in the rain, but they are also weak to the Water-type, as they are part Rock-type themselves. Just like the last one, I'm sure there is more out there like this, so let me know any you might know about in the comments below. Speaking of inconsistencies with Pokemon abilities, we've got a couple more facts here that show how abilities can be kind of broken sometimes. For instance, Levitate is one of the most popular abilities as it grants full immunity to ground type attacks. However, Pokemon with Levitate can still be hit with Sand Attack, which is a ground type move. You might say that this is because it's just a status move, not a damaging move, but this is still directly contradictory to the description of the Levitate ability, which has directly stated in every generation since Generation 4 that it grants full immunity to all ground-type moves, not just attacks. It's really weird that they have repeatedly stated this as the effect, yet Sand Attack has repeatedly still been able to hit Pokémon with this ability. Yet another ability oversight involves the Light Metal ability. This ability halves the Pokémon's weight, but for certain Pokémon, like Metagross, this doesn't really do much for it. Certain moves, such as Grass Knot and Low Kick, determine their power based on the weight of the target Pokémon, which normally would mean that Metagross is in luck with its Light Metal ability. However, due to how the damage is calculated for these moves, Metagross will still receive the maximum amount of damage regardless, because even when its weight is cut in half with Light Metal, its weight still exceeds the heaviest amount of weight that Grass Knot and Low Kick account for effectively making this ability useless for Metagross in this situation. Speaking of Hoenn Pokémon though, there is another interesting occurrence that occurs with the abilities of a couple more of them, namely Zangoose and Seviper. In Zangoose's case, it's got an interesting tandem of abilities, with its main one being Immunity, which prevents poisoning, and its hidden ability being Toxic Boost, which boosts its physical attack power when it is poisoned. That is kind of contradictory as well, but if it has Toxic Boost instead of Immunity, it can technically be poisoned, so it does work. It took me like five minutes to think that through, and I'm not proud of it. But anyway, these abilities are actually paralleled by Zangoose's rival, Seviper. 
Walls of Viper's regular ability is Shed Skin, which makes sense for a snake Pokemon, its hidden ability is Infiltrator, which passes through the Pokemon's barrier and ignores the effects of moves like Reflect and Light Screen. While this doesn't have anything to do with Zangoose directly, it does parallel how Zangoose's own hidden ability is Toxic Boost, which allows it to be poisoned, compared to its base ability where it can't be, effectively meaning that Saviper, with its hidden ability, can now pass through Zangoose's poison-proof barrier. Furthermore, Zangoose also has the immunity ability in the first place because it is based on a mongoose, which have evolved and developed a resistance to snake venom, which overall just gives the abilities of these two Pokemon an amazing amount of inspiration and attention to detail. Moving along, we've got another fact that might give us a peek at the development of abilities as a whole. Stench is an ability that was introduced in Generation 3, when abilities themselves were also first introduced, that reduces the chance of encountering a wild Pokémon, and also makes an opposing Pokémon more likely to flinch when hit with an attack. What's most noteworthy about this ability, however, is the fact that it is the very first ability in the index number order within the data of the games for Pokémon abilities. Given that index numbers traditionally indicate the order of things added into the games, or even when they were created, which we also see with Pokémon, like Rhydon being the first Pokémon ever created, and also being first in the index number list for Pokémon, it's possible that Stench was the very first ability ever created. If true, it's certainly an interesting first ability to have been created, especially because in Gen 3, it didn't do anything in battle. It only had the effect of repelling wild Pokémon outside of battle at that time. Hopefully, we'll be able to learn more about this someday, but for now, it's a pretty cool look into how things possibly went down with the creation of abilities. Next, thanks to abilities, there is actually a couple different ways that your Pokémon can become basically invincible and immune to all direct damage. When I say this, the ability Wonder Guard probably comes to mind, which only allows moves that are super effective to hit the Pokémon, and this ability is definitely involved in achieving this. Shedinja is currently the only Pokémon that can have Wonder Guard, so if a Shedinja uses Reflect-type against either an Electric or Poison Dark-type Pokémon, it would then only have one weakness, and only one type of move that could affect it. Ground. From here, if you gave Shedinja an Air Balloon to hold, which grants immunity to ground-type moves, Shedinja would then be immune to every single type of move and all direct damage. This is especially useful considering that the Air Balloon only works until the Pokémon holding it is hit, but since Shedinja can't be hit, the Air Balloon can't be popped. Additionally, if Shedinja were to use the move Entertainment on an Electric or Poison Dark type, which gives that Pokémon Shedinja's ability, then those Pokémon would also be immune to every type, if they also hold an Air Balloon. This would make for a pretty awesome strategy to try and pull off in battle, especially if you were able to pull it off in a double battle where both of your Pokémon were completely immune to all direct attack. And those were some awesome facts about Pokemon abilities. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. With that said, I will see you all soon with another video, and until then, as always, I love you all, thanks for watching, and I will smell you guys later.